The body mounts from Shapeways came in and here is the battery door. First things first, I'm going to mount these two little pegs to this mount there and that is the rear body mount. The reason why it's not designed in is because of the pickup point for the chassis brace. There's a little peg here at the rear which aligns to that little hole and then this should just, I think, nice, I'll use a self-tapping three millimeter diameter screw right in that hole, probably a six millimeter long one. And we'll put the same on this side. Both the pegs are in and now we can install this. I think it should fit fine. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, see the FDM didn't quite come out right up here. The middle's fine. How'd the other side come out? The other side's fine. How's the front? That's all. Yeah, it's just right in this corner. So I don't want to shave the door down, but I probably should. All right, so I just shave that down a tad and there you go. Good as, good as gold. I did another version of this for the TA-02. And one thing that I noticed when I did that one was if I pull, you got to kind of really tug on it, but this separates. So on the TA-02 version, there is a flange that comes off of the battery door and wraps around here so that really locks it in place. You know, you're always going to discover stuff like that on uh, a first iteration. But needless to say, we're good to go with that. Now we'll install the body mounts. So these are vertically adjustable. They'll go right in here. And so they've got a, a range of, I think, about six millimeters. The reason I made them adjustable is so that I can use them on multiple applications. Let's install those with some six millimeter long, three millimeter soft having screws. Okay, so those braces are installed and these will attach to the body. These have a front and rear movement that can be adjusted as well. This one goes on the passenger side like this, because later I can install the side exhaust right there. What is this? So that'll go just like that. You can see it slides six millimeters front to rear. So I sat the car down and immediately this happened because the garbage plastic that Tamiya used has cracked. This is simply the result of a PC ABS blend that is polycarbonate and ABS blend. And it just, you know, with these self tapping screws, it puts a lot of stress on these and over time they just crack. So fantastic. Looks like I'll be 3D printing one of those as well, but we'll get to that later. Meanwhile, we should be all set. So these, these are set vertically, but I haven't set the depth yet. Might as well just set it kind of in the middle, right? Why not? We'll scoot it a little further back. So the rails are installed on top of the vertical supports. I went ahead and set them in the center. So now we can drop the body on. I have no idea if this is gonna line up okay or what, but gotta start somewhere. So that's, that's pretty good. The front looks really good. Uh, the rear, well, it doesn't, so we can raise that up. I think what'll help too is if I shim the rear, the rear shock, because right now it's sagging a bit at the rear, but that is pretty much it right there. Yeah, that's, that's it. That is freaking it. Will this clear? Wow. There's a little bit of interference here at the front. This brace underneath here, probably going to paint that black. So excuse me now while I design a new rear hub. This is coming along really well, but I'm a little annoyed that the body is kind of worse for wear. And I normally wouldn't care that the stickers are peeling off or that it's yellowed a little bit. But the fact of the matter is this is made of polyethylene and you really can't do much with polyethylene. So I'm not going to use this body. It just so happens that many years ago I bought this. This is new in box. I don't think it's ever been out, but um, I don't care. We're going to use this because I want my toy car and I'm getting my toy car. Let's pull it out. This one is in excellent condition. It's got all of its 
of extra pieces there. Little bit of yellowing on the decal, but nothing in any way like this one. Now, the good news is I made no modification to this body. I just modified the bottom. So I'm gonna pull the bottom off of this, slap it under this one, put this in the box and get rid of it. So we'll pull this off. Beautiful. So the old body goes right back on there. I put the broken standoff back. You see that right there? It's exactly where it was. And now we'll just screw it down. I installed the body mounting screw there and that did the trick. So the body is secured now. At the rear, we have these little studs. So the plan is to drill a small 1.75 millimeter hole through that and then use a two millimeter self-tapping screw with an oversized washer to hold that in place. All four holes have been drilled. Surprisingly easy because there was a little bit of sink on the top of each one of these studs from the molding process. So it made a little divot. I'm not going to permanently install this. Obviously I need to put in some electronics, but I, I just wanna see how it looks and see if we have any interference issues. It looks like I have to slide these back a little bit. Front wheels straight. There's a little bit too little space there and there. So the beauty is we can just slide this back. I would say about two millimeters and I think we should be set. That looks pretty good. The gap here and the gap there are pretty similar. Uh, the front tire still, it's barely hitting the inside edge of this. So we can shave that off. The good news is there's plenty of meat there, but that's, that's it. I mean, the stance is pretty good. Some parts came in. So let's give a little quick update here. Here we have a new taillight. This taillight has the correct slanted corner. So we can see how the original one is first off, it's orange and it should actually be sloped back here even more than the plastic is molded. It should almost be parallel to this slope here. So it's a little bit narrower. It'll fit right in there. Of course, it's clear so that we can have reverse brake and turn some of the lenses. Here's the front marker, which is the same. This will be, I think this is clear and this is amber. And that'll replace the stock ones. We've got a headlight bucket which is a more appropriate depth. It'll need some sanding to get it to fit because it was just too hard to measure it. So I gave it a little bit additional depth so that we can probably shave off about a millimeter and a half on this side and have it sit there. We have a lower grill, offset grill, emblem, the fog lights. The fog lights will be cut out in here. The offset grill will be sunken in around there. And then this piece will go in this area here. We'll cut all that out because we no longer want the auxiliary lamps there and then we got these holes to get rid of but the really cool part and this is i mean the fact of the matter is this is always the cool stuff for shapeways are the really detailed stuff so here's the dash on the fiat ritmo or strata the instrument binnacle is is rectangular well on the molded piece here it, it simply isn't so i just did not feel like redesigning this piece here because it really won't be that visible instead that'll just go in place of it. So yeah, not, not entirely correct, but doable. So that'll go right there. So like that, we'll cut that out, put the steering wheel back elsewhere. We have the three switches there to the left, which will be illuminated in clear, the clock in red, and then the main gauges in green. So that'll look really, really good. Give it some additional depth. And more importantly, I want them very bright. I also wanted to show you some of the emblems. So this is the fender mounted emblem. Just to be very clear, this actual rally car should technically be a 1979 model, which was not an Abarth. But, uh, you know, it's a toy and I'm going to do whatever I want and make it a little bit more fun. Now I messed up. I designed this emblem with the side repeater as separate. And like a dummy, I forgot to suppress it in the model when I made an STL, which means the repeater is stuck in there now. So... I'm gonna try and make it work. Otherwise I'll just order a new emblem from Shapeways and I'll use this repeater. We've also got the hood and trunk Abarth emblem as well as the Ritmo badge for the rear. Now these are actually shrunken versions of the actual emblem that a buddy of mine made. I'm gonna go wash these off right now. It's always important to rinse them really, really well and use a detergent prior to actually painting them because the, uh, the support material is waxy and it doesn't always completely come off. I wanna start installing some of these parts that I printed. So we'll take a look at the taillight right here. And we can see that that's gonna replace that thing. Let's pop this out. There's a little peg right here. And I believe all I'm going to have to do is cut out a small section. Yeah, not to there. Basically, I have to slot this. And then on the side, we will have to obviously make that fit. So I'll get the Dremel out and chop out the inside section, and then we'll sand that carefully. 
So I've just chopped out the center section and for the most part, it's right in there as it should be. However, on the side, you can see the issue. So now with an X-Acto knife, we'll just uh, spend some time cutting this out. Well, there we have it. They're both in and I tell you what, it's looking pretty darn good. So let's move to the front and we'll peel that awful sticker off. Here is the front bumper, and we've got a lot of work to do on this, but we'll start with the turn and parking lights. This should just push right out using the wrong tool. And we'll replace that with this right here. Unfortunately, it looks like we have to cut out the whole thing in order to get this in there, but that's not gonna be too difficult. We'll just take this guy and hollow all that out. Okay. Use the Dremel to get the majority of that out. And now we'll just use the X-Acto knife to very carefully clean that out. So the next bit's gonna be interesting. I gotta cut out this entire center section over here to install this grill from behind. This grill is technically molded into the front bumper in this offset area. So the plan is to cut out a big section and then push this in from the back side like that, and then fill the perimeter in super glue sand it all smooth, paint the whole thing black, and then you'll never see it again. The Fiat emblem will be smack dab in the middle, so we can probably get rid of the license plate from Torino. There we go. All right, so let's cut that hole out. So the cutout for the, for the vents and bumper here, the cutout for the grill is there. And what I want to do, you can see the score that I did right there, is cut off this leading edge. Now this is actually accurate for the rally car, unfortunately it drops the front bumper quite a lot. And uh, for drivability, this is gonna be a problem. So we're just gonna shave it off and uh, make it nice and flat. Next, I wanna install the fog lamps. And those I've also modeled in two separate pieces. We've got the main lens, and then we've got the actual housing. So the housing, we're gonna have to cut a big rectangular hole in a panel that's not flat. It'll have to go in somewhere like that to uh, install the Abarth fog lights. Now, just to be very clear, the rally car was from 1979 and was before the Abarth was made. The Abarth, to anybody who's not aware of what Abarth is, think of Shelby to Ford or AMG to Mercedes. Abarth was a tuning house. And you can see in the front, it has the fog lights molded into the bumper. Now these aren't going to look that well integrated. They'll look okay, but you know, there's only so much that can be done. Although this does have a front spoiler, you can see that the spoiler on the actual Abarth is significantly different. For the rally car, they just added a spoiler over the stock bumper. Now the idea is to do this slowly. We're gonna want this right about here in the bumper. Again, I'm looking at the model. So it'll be right about there. And I think what we can do is start to cut out. Again, it has to be a rectangular cutout right about here to here. And we'll cut this out like so. And probably down to like right here. So we're going to have to do this slowly. All right, so I just used this. This isn't a burr tip, but it's like a diamond cut uh, tip where you can actually slide it sideways instead of just in one direction. Now you can see looking at it from the front, that's not going to work because we've actually got to clear it out in kind of perpendicular to where we want to go. So we'll just slot it back in. And to do that a little bit until we can get it to fit. Unfortunately, I can't do this on camera because it's just way too risky. Holes have been drilled, or I should say machined out of this. They look gigantic, but you have to remember that we have to look at it from the front. So this will slot right on in there. Now, I don't want it to be flush. It has to be at a slight angle, and I will explain that as soon as it's glued in. So we just want to make sure that it's level from the side and just about pointing at us from the front. So I'm going to do this off camera, but basically I'm going to put a little dab of super glue, use some accelerator to dry the super glue, and then we'll lock it in place. Okay, so they are in. Looks a little bit uh, not perfect, but don't worry. The reason this is sticking out is that it's supposed to. On the actual car, this front face is smooth with this curved face. So instead of going to the trouble of actually modeling that, which would have been a nightmare, 
The plan is to simply adhere it into place, use a piece of sandpaper and sand this down. Polyjet prints sand beautifully. They're not like nylon. So let's further secure this using some gel super glue to actually build back up this area and then we can sand it down. That is where we are at. So the gaps at the bottom, it looks like that there's still a hole there, but it, there's not. It's just that the cyanoacrylate or super glue is transparent. There are quite a number of layers on there. So it's probably around two to three millimeters thick in some points. Basically these fog lights are never going to come out. So the next thing is to sand these down to correspond as nicely as possible to the front of the bumper, like the actual car does. So I don't know that we'll get it that perfect, but I think it'll, it'll look good enough. So looking at the front, we can see that it's nice and contoured to the top, like on the actual car, and then slightly flatter there on the bottom. Really came out better than I anticipated. I'd like to install this instrument cluster in this area here. And once again, I've had to take a lot of liberties on this cluster. This is not how it actually is shaped in the car. It's much more rectangular, but that is the shape that this molded piece is. So we're just going to go with it. So let me just cut that out. Okay, so now we can just clean this up a little bit and then try and fit the cluster in there. And the cluster is installed. I over-exaggerated some of the features because the windows aren't particularly clear on this. And uh, there'll be quite a number of LEDs to provide the contrast for the lighting. So that should come out pretty good though. I will have a little driver seated here and a steering wheel as well. Mm -hmm. 